What is up my decks and drakes? Welcome to the Crawdad Lake. Like, uh Ty Star Kid, it exists. And today, Valentine's Day. Well, Valentine's Day today, I'm recording it. You guys are gonna be seeing this the 15th, not the 14th. Happy belated Valentine's Day then, but um I just got done watching Nightmare Time, episodes two and three. There will be spoilers for that. So, if you haven't watched it yet, I recommend you go do that first. There will also be um, sprinkles of fangirling, and if that makes you uncomfortable in any way, I'd click off now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, unscripted, unedited, I just wanted to talk about what I saw, and just star kid, you know? We're just gonna star kid this up. And right now I'm pulling up the episodes so I remember what happened in what order. Cause you know, I'm just quirky like that. No, that's not, that's not the place to use the word quirky. But you know, I'm quirky like that. <laughs> yes. So the first episode, the first episode, first part from episode two, I could talk, was forever and always. And this this just confused me mostly um forever and always like i get these are like horror and comedy mysteries but like dang this confused me so emma guatemala was replaced by a doppelganger robot who was created by the place where paul works at paul's a clone of multiple people who knows how many pauls there are and they got married and they murder and they lie so uh, yeah I think it really starts getting interesting once you get the connection with that and time bastard like I was freaking out very much so during that I was running around on my hoverboard watching the premiere as one does if you go through the premiere you could see me typing in the live chat <laughs> but uh <laughs> I'm sorry, my hair is pulling a whoop. But, um, Time Bastard is really what I want to talk about. Not for the plot, but because I have a thing. I have a thing, and his name is Professor Higgins. Okay, calm down, VP. He said he had a thing with Chad, and they did not go into details about that. I need to know the history between Professor Higgins and Chad, which I know after episode three, part two, no one's thinking about that, but like Henry Higgins and Chad, apparently Working Boys was based off of his own life in some way, shape or form. And that's why during show stop and number, he just kind of melts when he says Chad and he has to take a longer pause to say Chad. Just, what happened between Henry and Chad? Come on! But with Time Bastard, of course there are better things to talk about, like how Ted is the homeless man. And in that case, Ted could literally be every single character he has played. Uh, b that Joey has played. I should probably specify that better. Um, yeah. I... I like how Joey, Joey, now I'm using a real name, I like how Ted, well, I didn't like it, but it was a weird touch. Ted, he went back in time to, he went back in time to get with Jenny, but then he decided to go himself and not have his younger self go. Why? I mean, Ted's an idiot, that's why, but, like, why? And then, he freaking, he, he accidentally killed, he was also being a perv. He, he said the reason, he, he wasn't a perv with Jenny. Or maybe it's just because instincts, but also, like, what the heck? Je Jenny doesn't want this. And... You can't be happy with her. She isn't happy. Ted needs help. And then, um, 
I feel like I'm missing something because I always miss something when I do things like this. But you know, whoops. Also, one thing I really like how in the beginning, um, during the song for it, they zoom in on Ted's face from the guy who didn't like musicals at the end, and he's just like, like, oh my gosh, you know. Especially the credits for that, they just sang about peanuts, the Hatchetfield Pocket Squirrel. Like, random, <laughs> but like peanuts, you know, you gotta love peanuts. <laughs> the Hatchetfield Pocket Squirrel. <laughs> now, it's really episode three that gets my brain turning. Well, technically not Henry X Chad gets me turning but like within the theory brain I have many thoughts and things about episode three uh specifically part two but we'll get to that when the time comes but first uh Jane's car or whatever it's called I don't know their names I thought Jane was like a respectable person if Jane is Emma's sister and she was the way she was described in the guy who liked musicals and black friday she sounded so nice i don't know if it's because she was a car for a year and a half or something or you know killed but like damn she was not the way i thought she was like maybe if we got some background on how she acted like a as a human before she died or whatever that would probably help but i don't i don't know you know like she was not you know, like at this point, I want to see Tom and Becky get together. Because, like, in Black Friday, I was kind of against it. Like, yeah, Tim's not going to like this. After, during the time in which his mom died, him getting with another girl, like right off the bat, that probably would be scary to Tim. But after I saw the way Jane acted, it's like, and the way that Tim likes Becky, I don't like that Jane got to take over. Just <sighs> like I was shocked in the moment, yes. But the more that I think about it, I'm just annoyed by it. I don't like it, you know? Um But that's definitely not what you came here to hear me talk about. You came here to talk to hear me talk about episode three part two The Witch in the Web. I remember that title because the witch in the web, you know? Um, I will be doing a ukulele cover of the song once I get the chance and once I figure out the chords, because yes, uh, you know. Hannah is my second favorite character in all of Hatchetfield. The first one obviously being Professor Higgins, because <laughs> why wouldn't it be? Hannah is just Hannah. And the whole time, this 14... Like, I could... Sometimes I forget she's 14. Because in my mind, she's 9 like Tim. But I know she's 14. But, like... I, I feel so bad for her. Lex we got put in jail and everything. And I just... You know. You know. And her symbolism with the ukulele. And the songs that Webby had taught her. Or Webby sang. Something like that. I don't know. But I'm so glad it was a freaking happy ending. Because I swear to gosh, if it wasn't, I would have died. Like, I thought the ending with Lex was going to be the ending. But then I saw Webby come and I'm over here like... Like, I couldn't say I was more excited with Webby than what I was when I heard Chad and Henry kind of thing. But like, you know, you know... And then there's six dolls. Because I was wondering why there were six dolls behind the pianist. It was, the, it was either the pianist or the narrator. But, like, I was like, what are those six dolls behind him? And we find, like, a... We, introductions! And I want to know when these dolls are going on sale. Because I'm going to save up a bit, you know? Because uh, I, I got into Star Kid during quarantine. Which means that Wiggly was already sold out. So if these things are going back on sale, you know? I gotta... I gotta Okay, give me some Star Kid merch, you know? Okay, enough with that. So we find out that, like, the six elements, which just so happen to make a rainbow, are freaking brothers of the Covent or something like that? I don't know. I watched Owl House recently. I might be getting those confused. 
but like and I th- I think they're related to to Webby by like brothers or something or cousins or something I don't know but like during Black Friday Webby it made Webby sound like the bad guy I thought Webby was bad but of course they never elaborated but Webby's good and Webby's hot <laughs> okay scratch that scratch that um my pan self is coming out here right um, but just all in all that that had to be my favorite episode right next to the episode episode one part one where we're gonna see robert man and murder some people that was good <laughs> just kidding just kidding and i'm think and during the live chat live chat it was something like that like season yeah it was the live chat uh, see, it was announced that this was the end of season one, which means that there's two more. Se- Why am I? I'm guessing two more seasons, but or maybe there's just a season two coming up. Um, but there is six things. We were introduced to Wiggly, and we were introduced to the Eyeball. Oh yeah, and the Horseman. I keep forgetting about the Horse Goat Yellow one. Since there was three introduced. And this one, well, technically, Wiggly was introduced in the musical, but, like, I'm guessing three would be introduced in the next season, unless they're going to make that spread out farther. Who knows? But they just unveiled a giant lore like that. It just dropped it on us and then left us. It's like, are we getting merch of these? Do Would you like to explain Star Kid? I feel like Nightmare Time is just a way for Jeff Blum to get his fan fiction out before he goes insane in quarantine. Which, mood man, mood. <laughs> and watching the chat was just an experience. I participated very little in the chat, unless I was freaking out with them. But Star Kid chat is interesting question mark. <laughs> I don't know what to say about the episode itself because I forget a lot of the, a, a lot of the details unless I watched it a couple times, but I don't think I'm mentally prepared to watch it more than once right now. Uh, um, Frick Hannah's mother for being a douche. Um, I hope that Ethan and Lex get out of jail. Like that was never clarified, and I have a couple theories with the the hat of Grayskull. Which, I have a couple theories, racking in the old noggin. Um, my first theory is that Ethan also has nightmare time. But also, why doesn't he believe Hannah if that's the case? Or maybe he thinks that, like, it's different or something? I don't know. But, like, that one isn't just... That one doesn't hold up as much because in Black Friday, Ethan doesn't believe Hannah. Or, secondly, what I'm thinking is that... Um, well, this could go one of two ways. Either Ethan made up the Grey Skull thing and it ended up being true or something. I don't know. And I don't know what I'm talking about. Hold on. I need to get my thoughts in order because apparently this isn't working. Now, these most likely take take place in different universes. Uh, in case you could, can't tell, I thought I got my thoughts together. So these are different universes. What I'm thinking is like the skull hat respond or something, but just the the gray skull hat. I feel like that plays a greater significance. What's gray skull? Is that going to come in intervention with the six dolls? Um, what do the six dolls represent? Uh, what's their end goal? Um, do they have anything to do with the asteroid and the guys in like musicals? Because it's the same town of Hatchetfield. But these entities weren't introduced in that musical. Were they brought down in the meteor? There's just so many questions. I want to know how the guy who like musicals ties into most of this. Of course, the plot and the lore of the characters. But, like, with the horror sense wise, like, what do the, the six entities have to do with the guy who didn't like musicals? Like, do they connect to the meteor? That's my biggest question. Do they connect to the meteor? I mean, I'm thinking they do. But then again, when they wrote The Guy Who Didn't Like Musical, they weren't thinking... I, I'm guessing they weren't thinking this was going to turn into a big thing. It's just interesting to think about. Now I'm just going to do some general thoughts overall. Um, 
One of my favorite, my favorite part, I'm guessing people are going to ask me what my favorite part is. I'm going to go with each episode because I can't pick, like, between the episodes. And there's two stories within each episode, so I can't pick between four and the one for Quan, you know? So out of episode two, I would say my favorite part is Professor Higgins making a working boys reference and then bringing in how he had a thing with Chad. Obviously, that's my favorite part. (laughs) Once again, I really need him to elaborate, like... Did he base Working Boys off his own life? Is this a different universe where Working Boys was a real thing and not a musical? But he's so attached to the musical. So, like, you'd th- and, like, just, I want to know what's going on with Working Boys. What is the thing behind Working Boys? I need to know more about my baby boy, Professor Hitchens. Come on. And my favorite part in episode three was the introduction of the six entities as, like, Wiggly and Tickle. It was like Tickle? Tickle? Something like that? I forgot the eyeball's name. I'm forgetting their names. Don't. There's no need to comment them down below. I'll learn them in time. Just, they're not racking off my old, old noggin right now. Like I said, don't have a script. I'm not using any references. I'm literally just looking at myself in the camera. Um, and my least favorite parts had just... I didn't really like episode 2, part 1, all too much, to be honest. Like, it was very good, don't get me wrong, but also, like, you know? And my least favorite part in episode 3 had to be just Jane. Oh my gosh, Jane disappointed me so much. I thought Jane, like, maybe because she was a car for a year and a half or something, but, like, Jane was a big letdown. I thought she would have acted a lot differently or something. And, like, you know. And plus, just by Jane's car, like, you know. Like, I, 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 I want to see Becky take care of Tim. I want to see that. Even if it's just for a little bit. I want to see that play out. Uh, so, that's all the major thoughts I have right now. Uh, I'll probably continue talking about it, and if you have any of your thoughts, leave them in the comments down below. I am always up to some discussion. It'd actually probably be fun, because... Friends? <laughs> Ow, I cracked my neck. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed me rambling for... Um, what, what's the time? Um, 17 minutes and 42 seconds. Uh, <laughs> just, I ramble it like i said if you have any of your own thoughts leave them in the comments down below if you'd like to talk more in depth then i do have a discord and i think i have a chat dedicated to starcade if not i'll make that because that kind of needs to happen you know if not there's a fandom chat and you could just chat in there and overall just the people who are there are pretty fantabulous we could talk about starcade talk about senior sides talk about literally anything I- i'm up to talking about most things uh, my social media links are down in the description below, along with my Wattpad, Twitter, Instagram, things like that. If you look around me, there'll be, like, links to things. Uh, you could watch things and click things and go to my live channel and things, so hope you take the time to do this. This is a quick vid. It's not replacing any of my regular uploads. Uh, thank you for watching, and do your best.